Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cyber Secure TV. Uh, this week we're gonna talk about the Burp Macro Auto Authentication. So uh, many times we are facing challenges while using the Burp, or especially Burp scanner is we have a large site to scan, and let's say if they have an ideal session timeout, or for some reason Burp is trying to make some requests which forcefully logs out the application then uh, uh, like you know this is not a enterprise level of uh, scanner which would retry to authenticate itself but there is a way in the burp where you can manage your session so if burp detects the uh, like you know log out or something or uh, invalid session it's going to retry uh, the authentication by itself and that's we are going to use that or we're going to do that using the macro which uh, built in burp has provided right so I'm going to demo. This is a very important lesson because I had struggled a lot of time uh, while scanning like, you know, large application uh, with the session timeout. I had to sit in uh, front of the scanner and see, oh, whether uh, my request has started getting like, you know, 403, 404 or session timeout or logout or anything. Then I have to rerun the scan and that just whole chaos uh, how to do that. So this is a base solution. Uh, I have found so far, so probably if uh, maybe if you guys are facing the same issue, you can use that as well. So let's uh, let me jump onto the bar first, and we'll see how you can uh, configure that. So what we're gonna do is, first of of course we're gonna use the simple uh, bar. Uh, you can do this with the free or the pro version, doesn't matter. But yeah, uh, just make sure your proxy is configured on the right port. Uh, like if you want you can also intercept the response this is actually not required for this particular exercise uh, next thing I'm gonna use uh, demo the test fire for our testing purposes so how simple uh, like you know how simply the authentication works is let's say in any application you click on the sign in and just make sure you have this uh, burp configured so as you can see the request has been intercepted on now here you do not need to observe every request so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the intercept off but we'll take a look at the HTTP history right so I have intercept off let's go back uh, I have saved the credentials so I'm just going to fill those in and click login and congratulations we are logged in right now let's go to the HTTP history and we see the first method that burp sent out was uh, login.gsp then we have our username and password which was sent out and then the submit button was uh, clicked and this was the main page of the bank now let's make one more request so here when we made this request we uh, asked show account list accounts and this is our account number and in the response we got all our and recent transactions and, and whatever right we are least concerned with this but what we are concerned with is for example uh, likewise you have like you know multiple links here you have multiple operations in your application and you want to scan all of them so you would simply do like do active scan now during the scan it there is a possibility that the session might log out uh, there is a possibility that like you know it burp itself would kill the session and, and that would uh, deny any further scanning so we want to avoid that scenario now how do we do that is you go to the project project options and you go to the sessions so if you go to the session uh, one thing you would notice there is a cookie jar so if you open up the cookie jar you will see list of active cookies that is maintained by the burp suite now these are the cookies which burp will use for any uh, of course right now it's set for the proxy like you know based on the proxy transaction it's going to update this cookie value so for example uh, let's say this is the let me take the screenshot of this and then we can compare how does the value uh, change right so this is the values let's close this let me log out this is very important to understand, so that's why I'm I'm kind of going through uh, step by step. So let's sign in again, admin, admin, login, right? Everything is going through the, I'm sure like going through the HTTP history, so I'm not much worried about that. Let's open the cookie jar again. Now you see we only had two cookies instead of three, and you actually would see 
that the values of this uh, J session ID is still the same because, of course, this is a vulnerable application. It's not changing the session value of every login. But you also saw that this Altro accounts cookie is now not in, in that. So what happens is the burp maintains this cookie jar. And every time, let's say, we send a request from the repeater, we send the request from the scanner, but uses this cookie jar to send the cookie value along with it. Now, what happens if you log out is this cookie value becomes, like, you know, ineffective or invalidated, and hence, Burp is not able to authenticate. So we need to find an automated way to update this cookie value or, or like, you know, make it more accurate or make it current value. So we are going to use the session handling rules, and it says you can define session handling rules to make Burp perform specific actions when making HTTP requests. Each rule has a defined scope for particular tools, URLs, or parameters, and can perform actions such as adding session cookies, which we want to do it, logging into the application, yes, checking session validity, yes, each request is issued, verb apply sequence in each of the rules that are in scope for the request. So first off, we, what we're going to do is we're going to check the session validity. So every time our scanner or repeater try to make a request, first we're going to check whether the session is valid or not. If not, then we'll make Burp logging into the application and then update the cookie jar, right? So let's start with that. I'm going to add uh, um, a rule. I'll say do login. And rule action, let's add check if session is a valid. Right, so we'll do that for the current request. It doesn't matter which request is, like where the request is coming from. I'll actually show you uh, where you can define the scope of the request. But uh, for now, let's just keep like you know issue current request. Then uh, next thing we have to do is inspect response to determine session validity. Now, how does uh, Burp know whether the session is valid or not? It's based on the expression. So what we have said is like this is the default so every time anytime you log out of the application you might see the like you know uh, uh, uh any request will give you a 302 redirect and and say go to the login page or you're unauthorized so you can add anything right you can add like unauthorized so for this one let's go back and go to the proxy uh i'm gonna send it to the repeater Right and right now, am I logged into the application? Yes, I am. So let's sign off, right? And let's send the request. So what did we get? We got 302 because we are logged out. And as you can see, there is. So we need to find like one unique expression that we're gonna get if the session is not valid. So here, it is login.jsp. So even if we just keep the login, it it should work. So let's go back to project options, session, do login, check if session is valid, this is good. So we're gonna, whenever burp encounters login, it's gonna run the macro which define the behavior which we have defined, right, on session validity. Now you can also say if it's a, it should be a case sensitive or not, I'm just gonna keep insensitive, you can also see sensitive. Uh, in our case, it's actually this, but anyway, that that doesn't matter. Uh, match indices uh, indicates invalid session. So yeah, when when this matches, that means Burp has encountered an invalid session. Now we want Burp to automatically reauthenticate itself. So we're gonna say run a macro. If session is invalid, perform action below. And in the macro, I'm gonna choose. So this is the main part. You're gonna choose the request which helps you to authenticate to the server. So first, I'm gonna get login because it's gonna give me the login page. And then I'm gonna choose the do login, which is submitting the username and password, and it gives me the cookie uh, with the uh, authenticated cookie value. So I'm gonna click OK. Now you can re-record the macro, re-analyze macro, or you can test the macro. I know this macro works, so I'm just gonna test the macro. I'm not gonna re-analyze anything. So and yeah, as you can see, this is 200, this is 302. You can also see the response. We got the valid cookie, so yeah, this is gonna work. Hit OK, hit OK. Now look at this part. 
update current requests with parameters matched from the final macro responses, right? So, of course, this is just for the login, so we, we don't want to change any parameters. We're just going to use the same username and password. Uh, but anyway, you can keep this. And then the second most important is update current request with the cookies from the session handling cookie jar. So this is actually going to update the cookie value which we have in the cookie jar. So subsequent requests will use the new cookie value uh, which is authenticated and this will be completely transparent to you. So let's hit OK. And when I say click OK, I see a warning. The rule is not in scope for any URL. So you want to proceed? No, because we want to make sure this is applicable to all of our scope so here i have chosen like you know by default target scanner repeater intruder sequencer you can also choose extender and the proxy then the url scope uh, of course i generally or I, I wouldn't say generally but most of the time i determine what the scope going to be for the testing so i only add like you know uh, for example demo dot test fire.net and that way we'll only be storing history for this domain and then also this will only be applicable to this but right now you can also see like you know key for all URLs doesn't matter or you can say uh, use sweet scope which is define the target tab so which gonna like you know copy whatever we have here let's just do include all URLs and hit OK and make sure uh, this is checked now let's go back to the repeater right now let's see if are we logged in no let me refresh and just make sure we are oh we are logged in so sign off okay i'm gonna go back here and let's send the request now since we are logged in we still got the authenticated response and the best way to search for is you can see we found the account history for this particular account which should have not been here because we were not logged in now let me refresh we, here you can see we are sign off and then uh, i guess we can check like you know uh, we can go in and and uh, if i actually replace with this url we will be able to see the authenticated page right now let's sign off again and go to the project options and check this off now our session handling rules is disabled so now if i send this request and since i'm logged off i should not be able to get the authenticated response which i am not now i'm getting like you know location and redirect so if i follow redirection i'm getting the login page so yeah so as you can see it's asking for the username and password I don't know how well to so oh okay so rendering works so right now we are getting back to the login page now instead let's go back let's go here to login go to the repeater send and now as you could see we are logged in and we are getting the authenticated response right so this is not just applicable for the repeater as I said you can apply this to the scanner uh you you just need to define the scope in here you can apply in the scanner sequencer intruder and this is a lifesaver for me at least like if you are you don't have to worry about every time or oh, whether you're logged in or logged off like you can just continue your testing irrespective of session has time out and burp will manage its own session rules and uh give you authenticated results right so uh I guess yeah that that's about it I want to discuss uh, I just want to keep it short but I'm sure I hope this uh, demo uh, would helpful be you, for you guys uh, in the future for any testing that you may do uh, if you have found any other ways to uh, manage this session handling uh, with the burp let me know I I I will be more than happy to uh, know about that as well and uh, hopefully help our community if there are any other questions, let me know in the comment section. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and uh, follow me on Facebook. Uh, we post the updates on there. Uh, that's it, I guess, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.